Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, this is just a quick uh, video tutorial based on the work that we did last lesson. You'll recall that I did a live demo of uh, just modeling up um, this upper part of, it, let's say, a basic remote control. Um, and this video should help you to work at your own pace a little bit if I was moving a little bit too fast last lesson. So just to recap, we've got basically a plastic shell here. And if I just rotate underneath, you can kind of see how it's been shelled out, hollowed out under there. And I've got two buttons that I've created. And if I zoom in, you can see that there is a tiny little gap between the, uh, the button and the, the piece of plastic upper body or the shell there. And that's really kind of what we're gonna be working on. The aim obviously is for you to build enough skills that you can actually pick a remote and start re modeling a remote on your own. And uh, really that's what this is about. So without further ado, I think I'll jump straight into it. So I'm actually gonna delete this and we'll, we'll start modeling it again. So I'll go back to my four viewports. And what I've basically got in my layers on my right hand side over here, down here you can see I've, I've set up two layers, uh, one's for the body and one's for the button layer. I'm gonna be drawing in my top viewport and I'm gonna be drawing using a rectangle and I'm gonna use the rounded rectangle option. And I'm gonna draw it from the center. So I'll start from the origin where the red and the green line meet, which we know is um, uh, zero, zero, zero. And what I'll do is I'm just gonna type a number in here. I'm gonna type in, it's gonna be about 40 millimeters wide and I'm gonna make it about 110 millimeters long. And then it's gonna have a radius. So you can kind of see as I um, move my cursor, I could kind of pull that tight, I can loosen it up, but I'm actually gonna give it a, a number. I'll give it a, a maybe a five millimeter uh, radius and there's that one there. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is create some geometry for the buttons. So I'm going to switch to my button layer and I've done that and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to create two large buttons. This is a really basic remote control. It's just on off. Um, maybe it can turn down the volume of somebody in our class. I don't know who you can pick who it could turn down. Um, all right, so let's get into it. Rounded rectangle. And again, I'm going to choose to model it from the center and I'm going to come across on my green line there. And I might actually make this, um, I might make this about, let's say 25 mil wide by about maybe 10 mil. Okay, and I've got that. And you can see that I, again, I can, uh, put my radius in there. In fact, I might put a radius in maybe of about three. Okay, so that's what I've got. There's, there's a shape for a button. Now, what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna create an offset of this piece of geometry, which will be used to uh, create the, to the tiny gap between the button and the plastic shell. So I'm just gonna type offset in the command line, and I'm gonna zoom in here and currently mine's set to 0 0.5. Maybe I might make that a little bit smaller, maybe 0 0.2. And I'm just gonna offset that onto that side there. All right, so I'd like another button. That's gonna be pretty much uh, my geometry for my on button and I'll copy that. So I'll just go Command C on a Mac and Command V or Control C, Control V on a PC. And I'm just gonna pull this down to let's say there. So I've created some basic geometry. All right, let's get back to the, the shell, if you like, or the plastic body. So I'm gonna switch my layer back to the body. I'm gonna select um, my, my shape, if you like, and I'm gonna make that into a surface, and we're gonna go planar curves. Okay, wonderful. So you will all be aware that I've got a curve and a surface. I don't need that curve anymore, so I'm going to delete it. All right, so I now need to give this some depth. So I'll select that surface, solid, extrude surface, and straight. And I'm gonna pull this up in a positive direction. I'm gonna pull it up maybe about four millimeters. So I'll type in four in the extrusion distance, and away we go. So really what I've got right now, the, my uh, current selected object is of course that surface which I just used to build the poly surface, and I'm gonna get rid of that. Now. What I'll do at this point in time, I might as well round off the outside edge. I'm gonna put a fillet on that edge. So I'll type fillet edge into the command line. There you can see fillet edge. 
and I'm going to choose a radius. I might choose a radius of about two millimeters here, and I'm going to hit that and hit enter. Okay, and there we have a nice filleted um, upper portion or upper body, if you like. All right, so the next thing we want to do is just have a look underneath there, and we can see that like it's just this solid block. So what I'd like to do is to shell this out so it kind of represents that piece of plastic. So to do that, I'm going to rotate to the underside so I can see that bottom surface. And I'm going to type in shell. And we'll just hit enter there. And basically, you have to, it says here, select the faces to remove from the closed poly surface. So I'm going to be selecting this face. And then we've got the thickness, the thickness of the actual plastic itself. So I'm going to leave this as one um, in this uh, example if you like. Alright, so I'll hit done. He says, and there it, there you can see it's just had to think about that for a moment. Just had to shell that out. And that looks pretty good. Pretty good. Alright, so we're going to get back to working with the buttons. So what I really want to do is I want to cut two holes in here, two rounded rectangular holes in the piece of plastic. So we'll do that. We will work with the outermost shapes there, which is that one and this one here. And I'm just making sure I'm switching to my button layer just so we can differentiate. So I've selected those two pieces of geometry and I'm going to make those uh, planar curves or, or surface from planar curves. Okay, I've got that. Now I can delete my original curves and we'll select both of those surfaces together. And I'm just going to extrude those straight up so it actually cuts through the, um, the body. Again, what you can see currently selected are my surfaces which I use to build those solids. So I'll delete those. So just to quickly show, that's what I've got. It's, we're basically using these two objects to cut a hole, rather like a cookie cutter. So this is where we start to use Boolean differences. So this is the tool for Boolean differences. If I hold down the left mouse button, we get lots of objects or lots of options. So second one down, Boolean difference. Okay, so select surfaces or poly surfaces to subtract from. So that's basically saying, which item would you like to keep? That's the item I'd like to keep. I'm going to hit enter to continue. Select surfaces or poly surfaces to subtract with. That's the objects that we're removing. So I'm going to select both of those and I'll hit enter again to confirm. All right, fantastic. There is my upper portion or upper body uh, with some... Uh, holes cut out ready for the buttons. All right, so let's get on to the button making. So we're talking about making the rubber buttons here. All right, back to my four viewports. We'll go into here. So this time I'm going to use these two pieces of geometry and I'll make those into surfaces. Wonderful. And I can delete the original curves. Okay, so let's just have a look at where those buttons are located or those surfaces are located. You can see in my um, front view here, they're sitting on the ground plane. And what I'd actually like to do is I'd actually like to lift those up to about there. Okay, so you can actually see it's about one mil below the, the, the upper edge of the plastic. And what we'll do here is we'll solid extrude those surfaces straight up. And I'm just gonna uh, pull it so it's like one mil sitting above. You could pull it up higher if you wanted to. It's up to you, you know, it's kind of just get, getting the right look. So I've, I've extruded that, and again, I need to delete the original surfaces. So I'll delete those now. And whilst we're here, we might think about rounding off or filleting these edges here, just again to soften that off. So you'll recall that the uh, command that we used was the fillet edge command. So I'll pull that up. I think a radius of 2 is going to be way too big here. So I might actually put in maybe 0.5 of a millimeter and kind of see what, what happens. So I'll select both of those edges, hit enter. Okay, and you can see there we've got a nice rounded edge. All right, so um, that gives us our buttons. Let me just have a quick little look. And if I zoom in, you'll see there's a tiny, tiny little gap there, which is perfect, ideal. 
all right, how are we traveling for time? Just about the 10 minutes mark. We'll probably get this done in under 13 minutes. All right, so the next part, what I want to do is I want to write on and off on these buttons. So I've actually got another layer set up here for text. Okay, and what I'm going to do in my top view, I'm just going to use the T tool, the text tool here. And when I open that, you basically type the word that you want to, or it could be a number. I've just typed the word on, and I've actually got on mine, I've got Helvetica Bold. You could choose whatever appropriate font you think is, is um, appropriate. And it's very important that you've got it set as curves, and obviously you want to group the objects. That way you're not moving O and then you're moving N, so they'll move together. Now one thing you do want to pay attention to is this here, the text height. So if I look in here right now, I've got like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's basically got like a 10 millimeter height there. So I could maybe up that. I might make it maybe 6 millimeters. And I'm just going to click on OK. OK, and there you can see it. OK, now I'm going to live with this for the moment, I think. Um, in fact, you can kind of see how I'm kind of snapping uh, to the grid there. What I might do is just turn grid snap off and just kind of finesse that by eye to about there. So I've dropped that, I'm going to turn grid snap back on. Okay, so we might do the same with off whilst we're here. Text, we'll type off. It's going to be the same and I'm basically going to position that where I'd like that to be. I'm going to pretty much drop that about there. Okay, so we've got both of those. All right, let's work with um, the on. I'm going to actually, in my perspective viewport here, I'm going to switch this to wireframe, I think, just so you can kind of see what's going on. All right, yeah, so you can see I've got that, that down there. So what we'll do is we will go to solid and we're going to extrude planar curves this time. Extrude planar curve straight, and we're going to pull that straight up here. Again, so it's cutting through. Original, original uh, curves that I've got there, I can delete those. So just what I've got, again, just to show you, you can see that that's extruding through. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to split that surface. Okay, the split tool is this one here. Not to be confused with trim, we're using split for this. So I'm gonna click on split, select the object to split. That's gonna be this object here. We'll hit enter. The cutting object is going to be the O and the N, and we'll hit enter. Okay, now the job has been done. What we actually need to do is to delete these objects. And what you can actually see there is that the surface has been split. Now that means that I can select both of these, and where you can see the layer right now, I can actually switch that, that um, layer to the text layer. Oops, sorry, my mistake. Let's select that object and that object, and I'll switch that to the text layer. Okay, so you do the same with the off. Um, so basically, yeah, exactly the same. So really that's gonna form the basis of your understanding to be able to cre create and model a remote control. All right, so work your way through this. Like always, make sure you know you have a crack, you uh, model it up, you delete it, you cement the knowledge, then you can kind of you know, check that knowledge and go again. Um, to model the underside, in fact, what I might do here, I might just model the underside here. You might remember that I deleted the original geometry of this, this uh, shape, if you like. Um, what I'll do is I will create, in fact, I'm going to type in this, DUP edge, duplicate edge, okay? And I'm gonna select this, sorry, not that one. Maybe zoom in again. DUP edge, I'm gonna select this external edge, okay? And then just hit enter. Now what that gives me is that gives me that piece of geometry again. So here I could go surface planar curves, Okay, so I'm looking for that surface, which I've just built. It's down the bottom there. You can actually see it's on the purple layer. I should have created another layer for the, for the body. In fact, I'll switch this to um, the body layer. There we go. And I'm going to extrude that 
straight down and I'm going to go in minus 4 I think I'm going to delete the original surface by the way you can see it's, it's flipped back to being on the text layer I'm going to switch it back to the body and that's because I've got I've still got text layer active here so I'll switch to body all right and what I can do here I can fillet this edge so we'll type fillet edge um, I think I had it set to three before I'll select that outside edge there we'll hit enter and hey presto now what we'll probably find here I'm just gonna hide this object by typing hide there's that original curve which I don't need and what I should really do with this is to shell this object out because of course this would probably have you know your internal uh, circuit board batteries that sort of stuff so I'll, I'll select that top surface we'll hit enter it will think for a moment there it goes it shelled that out and then I can bring everything else back by typing not hide don't want to type hide I should type show okay there it is so that's top and bottom done um, I could you know I could kind of pull that bottom part down um, all right, so that's going to be it for the video. I ran a little bit over time there, girls, but that gives you the, the, um, the know-how, the skills to do top and bottom. All right, girls, I will, um, I'll talk to you uh, online at some stage, no doubt, and hopefully that will give you a bit of work to do uh, this lesson in, in readiness for um, next week. All right, see you later, girls.